Now in this video, I have the normal what solds. I sold nine cards on eBay, one on Etsy, so I only have 10 cards to go through, so I'll sprinkle them throughout the video. I have a special topic, white border postcards. The parameters are kind of elusive, but I'll talk about what I know on the white borders. And then I got one of those polls. I put a poll out that said, what listing tool do you use? I did talk about it in one of my last videos on one of the comments, but I got the most updated uh, stats and I'll show you. And I might need some help to understand a couple of the other tools that I don't know a lot about. And then I got about three viewer comments to go over, to give some insight on what I do. And then I went to an auction. I haven't been to an auction in a while. And as you know, I just don't sell postcards. I do sell at the flea market and I have a small toy, toy store now. So I got a couple things. A lot of people probably just sell postcards when watching the videos, but there's a lot of others that sell things. Plus, a lot of people are about my age, don't know what these are. And it'll bring back a little bit of memory. But let me go through real quick on a couple of the cards. I sold uh, the one on Etsy. Now Etsy, in the last two, three months, have been doing better. It's still not at the level of eBay, but I am getting more sales. I'm getting almost daily sales on Etsy where that wasn't there before. So hopefully going into 2022, Etsy becomes more steady instead of the up and downs. Now hip is hip. Hip is just whatever comes in. I one Some days I don't get sales or two or three days and then I'll get five cards or something. Uh, so it's just an easy site to deal with. It's a micro niche. I like to have a presence there because it does bring a different audience in. And it's so easy to list. I put it on eBay, it goes over to hip. And it just, if it was harder than that, I, I would think twice a little bit, but it's a micro niche site. So I don't expect as much as Etsy or uh, eBay. But the card I sold, you'll see a lot of Navy ships today. That's mostly what's been going uh, yesterday. But this is the USS Newport, sold on Etsy. I only put a couple of, uh, like, I didn't put, if I had like 500 of these, I put them on eBay, then I would take one, put it to the side to put on Etsy. <laughs> I didn't put the big quantities on Etsy. And I wanted to see what the Navy ships did on Etsy, and they're actually selling. People are actually on Etsy buying these Navy ships. So I have a whole stack here of... Navy ships that are slated in the next month or two to be put up on Etsy. And I don't list, I'll list like 50 cards on eBay a day and maybe I'll put 10 on Etsy because of their fees. It's 20 cents per listing for four months. So it's fine, it's only $2 for 10 cards, but then in four months, in four months, in four months. So if you list 100 cards in one day, you got $20 every four months and your cat it could affect your cash flow so i, I kind of do 10 to 15 cards i might skip a day if i got other things going on um but etsy next year i'm planning 2022 to see if i can bring it up to the five to six thousand card right now i got about four thousand on etsy but it's still not at the level i would like it it is paying for itself now but there has been some months where it didn't pay for itself so it's still a struggle there i, I think it's a different animal so you got to treat it a little differently. Now on eBay, that's where bulk of the sales are of my postcard selling. You're going to see a lot of naval ships. This is one of those prints. It's a USS Boyd. It's a little bit bigger than a Continental. This one might be, but the club that I bought these from made their own cards and their own negatives and stuff like that. And some of the trimmings are taller than a Continental. But this one's close. I don't know if I can get it in a Continental sleeve. But it, it, they still fit into the standard envelope that I use. Now this gentleman bought two Navy, two of the same card. I'm getting a lot of more multiple buyers because I have a volume discount. Uh, so if you buy more, two or more cards, it's 10%, three or more, it's 15%. So they get a, a cut if they buy more cards and it's, plus it's less postage for me because I can put up to four or five cards for an ounce in an envelope and without meeting the thickness. But this guy bought two of the USS Virginia, the BB-13. This is another one that the club printed off. It does have a lot of information on the back. So it's a, not a black and white. It's got some color to it. But these are continental size, a little bit smaller than continental. So you get about two of those. That's about a $9 sale. And 
the last one before I get into white border. This is the USS Robinson. I thought it was Robinson, but it's Robinson. DDG-12. It's a guided missile destroyer. Right there. So it's a nice solid chrome card. I only had one of these cards out of a whole batch, so I'm out of those. That version. I do have another version of Rob Robinson, but this card is sold out. Now before I get into white border, I want to show you what I found at the auction. Now people my age that grew up, you know, grew up in the 70s and 80s uh, know of this TV show. But I, I always pick up, look for lunch boxes, the metal lunch boxes. And this is a 1974 Aladdin lunch box. Six million dollar man, Lee Majors. Look at the shape of this thing. And it's got him here with a big log. You got Oscar Goldman on the back. There is no thermos with this one uh, on there, but I always check and see what the inside. And inside, there's some stickers from Charlie's Angels in there. <laughs> so, yeah, it's got that musty smell to it, so it's nice and good. But that's the Six Million Dollar Man. And then I couldn't pass the other one up at the auction. So when I bought one, one, I picked up two. Welcome back, Cotter. Who remembers this show? This is another Aladdin 1977 lunchbox. The same thing. It's not bad inside. Looks pretty good. Usually when I get these, they're one side usually rusted. They're dented. The handle's missing. Uh, stuff like that. I'm not really that worried about thermoses if they have a good price on them. But some people will price these uh, lower, real low, without the thermos. But I could go out and pick up the thermoses for these you know, ten, twenty dollars and it it would increase the price but it wouldn't bring it enough for my trouble. So I usually just sell them as is. Both of these I paid about a hundred dollars. So fifty dollars a piece, a little higher than I wanted. I wanted to stay in the thirty, thirty five dollar range. But I was gotten into a bidding war and you don't see them in this good of shape that often. No dents or rust and stuff. So I picked them up. I should be able to get my money back easily and a little bit more. But it's just neat to have. And I'll probably end up bringing these to the flea market. I, I probably won't put them on eBay. Uh, a lot of people out there will buy this type of stuff. You know, maybe I'll price them for $85, $90. And at the flea market, you know, if you put $90 on something, someone's going to say, hey, what do you take $40 for it? So it'll be a dickering back forth. But I'll make sure I get my money back and stuff on there. And there won't be any shipping. But I just wanted to show you that. Hope it brought back some memories. Anytime you see Six Million Dollar Man, I'm a sucker for it uh, on there. Bionic Woman, all them. But I thought I'd throw it in there for the people that just don't do postcards. I always uh, look for the white border postcards. I get a lot of questions. People send me pictures. They ask me, what is a white border? Technically, it's a white border. But let me dive in a little bit deeper. It's, and you'll see how elusive the parameters are. So right here, it, it, white border is a designation used by collectors for a type of postcard published in the United States between 1915 and 1930. So between 1915 and 1930 is, is the era of the white border. Now some postcards have always had a white border around their image, even before that, uh, on there. But this is a distinction of 1915-1930. And the reason why is the number of white border postcards increased during World War II due to the embargo of the German inks and postcards. So when we decided in England, everybody decided to put tariffs and because of what was going on in World War II, stop the imports from Germany, the United States just flooded their market by buying everything up they could from Germany, making their own postcards. And that's where the white border came. Now, some people say the white border part postcards came about due to lack of skilled workers that were needed to trim postcards as it didn't take as much skill to trim these white border postcards because they could trim it won't affect a the picture they could be a little off and it wouldn't affect then others say that white border allowed for less ink to be used cheaper both explanations are not really confirmed but they're stated a lot. So if you hear it a lot, it's probably true, but um, so the embargo happened. We needed to start printing postcards here. We didn't have the skilled workers that Germany had. 
and over there in Europe. So they went to white border, the trimming, and then plus we couldn't get the inks. So the prices went up, so they went cheaper. Had some merit to it. But that you'll hear that a lot about white borders. Many postcards were printed with a white border. Some linen postcards are not recognized as true white border postcards. So that's probably one of the most um, questions I get is if you get a linen card or you get a card and it's just got a white border, but it's got the waffle texture on it. It's not a that's not technically a white border postcard per this parameter of this uh, des designation. This is a linen card. It's got the waffle texture. So you got to kind of look at it sometime. Just because it has a white border, yes, technically it has a white border, but it, it's a linen card. It's not recognized in the era of white border. I see many postcards people state are white border that I have question on the parameters. Am I the white border police? No. But I, I, I really like the white border. If I say my favorites are divided back, it's everything. But my favorite one, a lot are the white borders. They're just made on good cardstock. And there's some really good uh, subjects on them. The parameters are hard to determine. And they state the term white border still remains elusive due to this. So there is some crossover. You know, there's white border on other postcards. When's this? What's the ink? So do your best to identify your postcard and what classify them as they are. If you're not for sure, I always leave it up to the collector to decide. Have I got any white border back? No. When I said they're white borders, they're white borders. Uh, so far, I haven't got any back or I missed any. But if I'm not sure, I'll probably sometimes leave it blank or take my best guess uh, on there. So let me go through a bunch of these cards just to give you an idea um, on white border postcards. And then we'll get into what the pricing of white border postcards. So this one is actually a white border postcard. It's got a slick surface. It doesn't have the waffling or the texture, the red count of a linen on it. And you see the small white border. And if you look at the top and the bottom, or the sides since it's a vertical, it's trimmed a little closer. But people actually wrote down on the bottom here. But that's a white border postcard. And this was posted in 19, I can't tell. 1918 so it falls right in there but that's a white border postcard and you see it glisten a little bit that's a, it's going to be slick it's going to be a solid card is how i determine helps me with the parameters next one white border or not no i just showed you this one even though it has a white border it has the waffle texture the the, the texture on it and you can also tell by the color blue and one of my videos the linen video coming up I'll explain about the blue on the linens, but this one is actually a linen card. It's not a white border. So if it's a linen card with the texture, it it's not a white border. It's a it's a linen card. So that's what that one is. <clears throat> now this is a white border. Again, uh, probably see it glisten a little bit. It's got a smooth surface. It's got the white border around it. It doesn't have the texture uh, on there and it's a divided back on there and it's got a one cent stamp box the next one now this will have this one I pulled because it has a texture to it but it's the ink texture it's how they did the ink a little heavier but it's not a linen it's a white border um, it, it's on the thicker card it's a little slicker and it does have a little probably a little glisten to it but it has a texture but it's not a linen it doesn't have that waffling and it's divided back uh, on there now this card if I hold it back here looks like a white border but it has the waffling texture of a linen this is a linen card so it has a white border but it has the waffling texture you can see the blue on the jacket but that's a linen not a white border and the last one is the same type of ink it's a heavy ink but this is a white border it's on the heavier cardstock it's more slicker um, on there but it's not a linen card but if you feel it it does have a texture but it doesn't have that linen look or the waffling look on there so this is a white border 
I don't know if you can see it closer, but there's no waffling on there. But that's how I tell white border postcards. If anybody's got other tricks for white border postcards, since the parameters can be pretty elusive, leave it in the comments so we all can learn from the tips and tricks by identifying those. But I, I most definitely, just like the card I'm gonna go through here in a minute, is a white border card. You do get them in the lots and they are pretty prevalent out there and you'll sell them. But let's take a look and see what the prices are. Like I normally do, I went out to eBay, I sorted on the sold high. And here's what I found. Anything in the title that had white border is what I put on there. Just to grab them, just to see. And right here is the sold high. They're selling this one, Indian Village sold for $3.00. The Hollywood, Florida, three fifty, dollars um, And then you got one from the 1930s, Big Falls, two twenty-five. dollars So those were the solds. Those are three sam samples of there. Now, if you look at the low, dollar four in an auction, three bids, dollar shipping, so $4 on there. And then you got another auction, $4.99, one bid, free shipping. So 4 to $5 is where these cards are selling on there. And I always check the listed just to see what's being listed out there. See how sometimes crazy it can be. But the listed high right here, this is uh, some, I don't know for sure what it is. Some arch bridge, $17.97 plus $4 shipping. So that's $22 for a white border card. Next one is probably the same seller, $17 for, you know, $22 for that. And then the next one is uh, Bathing Beach, which is probably better than the top two, is they want $20 plus a dollar, so $21 for there. Are those out of line? Maybe there's something about these cards. Maybe there's something with the subject that they're higher, but to me, just taking a snapshot of them, I could probably go out and find that card cheaper. Especially when I saw the solds at 2 and $3. Now let's look at the what listed low, what people are putting them up there for low. So the, remember the extremes. You got $20 cards. Now you got $225, $225, $240, and they're all a dollar shipping. So $325, $325, $325, and $340. And the other guy was doing them for $18. Whose cards do you think is going to sell first? What what makes those other cards different than these cards? Yeah, those are other three cards there could have something special on the subject but do the people are the people missing something on the low so those are the decisions by using these four things sold high sold low list high list low it gives you an area to think about are these average cards special cards or what should I put them up there I would not list the cards I see here at $17.95 $22 for a postcard they might sell to the impulse buyer but to normal collectors that I target they would pass on those. Now the one that had the bathing beach, that might be something different, but you always kind of need to do your research if you think you got something special. But that's basically white border postcards. They're, to me, they're just basically average cards. It depends on the subject. I've gotten okay with identifying them. I do have questions on some once in a while, but once you understand the slickness or if it's a linen, it's usually linen in there. Um, and then you gotta look at the dates if it's prior to that. So don't feel bad because the parameters, like they said, are elusive and it's sometimes hard to determine. But do your best. If you're not sure, leave it up to the collector um, on there. But that's white border. Any questions, leave it in the comments. Who knew? Let me go ahead and finish up some of these eBay cards that I sold. Like I said, I didn't have that many but it, it's the holiday season. Perfect timing. White border card like I showed you. Has a little inset on there. This is home of Ralph Waldo Emerson. E, it, oh, it says eBayist. Or, oh, not eBayist. Essayist and poet. I thought it said eBayist at first. <laughs> Concord, Massachusetts. So it, it's a home. It's a white border card. You can see it shine a little bit. It doesn't have the texture. It does have the blue. So it could throw you off. But this is a white border card. And you'll see this on a lot of white border cards. I, I, when I see that, I pretty well say it's a white border a lot. It helps determine it. Is that postcard the way it's written there? 
I see that a lot on the on white borders that I see lately. But this sold between all the cards today sold between four and five dollars. I didn't have any really special ones. This gentleman here bought Persian Golf Battle Force Operation Desert Storm. That's the Battle Force. He was he, they, I get a lot of messages from boat uh, ship navy guys looking for a certain boat, and I'm able to go out and search um, from that club. I have a drive. Uh, with all the boats names and stuff on there so I can search there search my inventory search my store He was looking for a tech USS Texas and I didn't have that one So I was able to get back to him and say hey, you know Roger. I didn't have that one, but uh, keep checking our store But I, I didn't have that one So he bought this one the battle force. It's chrome card. It's edge to edge. There's no white border the picture and It's got a little curve to it, but it should flatten out. No problem. just the way it was stored but four to five dollars Next one is another white border with a crease. Now this is uh, interesting. I've, I've never seen this card from Yellowstone. It's Handkerchief Pool. So I'm not for sure what Handkerchief Pool, but I got it written down to understand what a Handkerchief Pool is because I see some handkerchiefs or something there. But it's a white border card. It does have a crease right in the top here and I disclosed that in the listing. I just put crease top left. It's usually what I put in the thing, but look at they're standing around a pool and if you look real close there's some handkerchiefs in there but this is a white border card no texture has a little bit of glistening to it um, it does have the regular postcard back but white border card four to five dollars now I just don't sell postcards in the postcard store I, I experiment with a whole bunch of different things and I got a bunch of Andy Griffith show po trading cards they came in a set but I broke the set up and I listed them throughout a month. I did maybe four a day or whatever. And just put them up there. They paid for themselves in the first month. They don't sell a lot and they're getting rich on them. But it's just something different to bring people into the store. And I sold Andy and the May Mayberry Friends. These are small little cards. You can see the size of a standard postcard compared to a trading card. And these will go eBay standard envelope. Nice solid card stock. They'll go in a sleeve, four fifty-five, just like a postcard. But someone might need a this card number, three twenty, to complete a set. But these actually sell pretty cheap as a set. I think I paid maybe four dollars at a flea market, or maybe two dollars for the whole set of a hundred cards or something. And I put them on there. But Andy Griffith, it sold. And the last card uh, that sold. Now this is a real photo postcard. RPPC, RP, developed on paper, doesn't have dots. Now this, I, in this ship Navy hall, I had two, three boxes full of separate cards and a lot of them were uh, photographs like this or they were real photo postcards. Now this is a photograph, it's on Kodak paper. I think it's like Kodak paper. But it, it's it's a flimsy paper. That's a photograph. Now this is a postcard. This is a photograph developed on paper with a postcard back. And I don't know if you can see it there, but it says photo postcard right across the top, right up there. Now you got to watch it sometimes. There's some fakes out there where people will put glue on a, a back like this onto a picture and say it's a postcard. Um, but this is a real photo postcard. This sold for uh, 855 on there. It's the USS Bancroft. And if you notice, something got uh, exposed in there. That's not a tear. That's actually on a negative uh, right there. But I've been listing these real photo postcards along with these photos for 855 And they have been selling. I'm just getting into the real photo postcards because I had them stacked and I did them separate so I can make sure I do them right. But that's all the cards I sold. Sold 10 cards, about 50 bucks. Uh, this time of year, you never know. I had some real good days in the last week, and uh, it'll go back and forth. But now let me get into the poll. I put these polls out on Saturday mornings in the community tab on the channel. You'll maybe see them pop up to you. It's real easy to do. Just click on them, and it, they're just questions. I got them scheduled out for a while. I just, whenever I think of a question, I schedule them out, and they go out every Saturday at 9 a.m. Central. Uh, they're anonymous. I don't know who clicks what. It doesn't give me that information. But this poll went out. 
What listing tool do you use to list postcards? I hear a lot of banter back and forth about this tool, that tool, I use this, this is the best way. I did talk about it in a viewer comment in the last video, but I wanted to bring the poll and I grabbed it this, right before this video on the latest stats. So out of 51 people that voted on this poll, 73% use the eBay listing tool. 4% use 6-bit. 6% 6 used Inkfrog and 18% used Other. So I'm not for sure what all the other are. In the viewer in the viewer comments today, I did talk about what this one gentleman did, and I know what the other there. <clears throat> but I guess back in the day, there used to be Turbo Lister. A lot of people that started postcards in the late 90s, early 2000s, used Turbo Lister, and because the eBay listing tool was just huge and very up and down and stuff. And they were still growing, you know, developing it. So there, there was Turbo Lister, there was Six Bit, and on there. But I think eBay has cleaned up the listing tool over the years, and a lot of people have gravitated to that since it comes with eBay. It's free. But then there's also Six Bit. Go out on the internet and look at the Six Bit software. It does. Uh, you can, I guess, you can do it offline and stuff like that. I don't know a lot about Six Bit, so if someone can. Put in the comments or reply on the difference in the advantages of six bit over each other the pros and cons there's always cons and there's always pros but what what does six bit give you for the money you pay above and beyond the ebay listing tool is it speed is it something you like or is it just something you use all the time and you just want to keep it and then you got ink frog ink frog is another tool a lot of people use to suck out their listings from uh, eBay and then put them up on Shopify, Amazon, and stuff like that. They use that as a middleware tool, is what we'd call it in IT, a middleware. It's kind of like a middleman. I tried the Inkfrog because I had so many listings in the toy store and so many listings in the postcard store. I wanted to have a backup and just to maybe do something different with it later on. But I didn't like it. I, I didn't really understand the sync. I didn't trust it. I didn't know if it was changing my stuff. Um, it didn't have all the features that I wanted and I couldn't log in some days so maybe I was using it wrong or whatever but I think I'm pretty technically savvy but I I didn't buy it after the trial I said no this and that it was nice to have a backup but I, what was I gonna do with these backups if I couldn't get them back up whatever so I, I didn't use it but if someone else has got ink frog or six bit and can tell us the pros and cons of what they are or if somebody using the eBay listing tool has some tricks about it too. I I love to hear if someone's doing it differently. I know, I know, so there's different ways to list postcards. You can do, you know, sort them all out ahead of time, South Carolina, North Carolina, Illinois, and then sort them more, and that way you only have to change a piece in the title, um, and everything's the same. Or you can do sell similar, you can do drafts. There's just so many different ways, and, uh, I just basically scan my cards and then I put them in front of me and I look at them as I list them and if it's say it's something I got like Cypress Gardens bridge in Florida I know that goes in a flea market box I just delete the scan uh, and move to the next card so I don't do a lot me myself I don't do a lot of pre-sorting I have I, and I use eBay templates so I just have a few clicks to do um, on there so there's a lot of different ways to do it and you'll hear a lot of different people say what they like and stuff but whatever works for you to get the cards up and listed that's the key you don't want to spend a lot of time listing you want to get it in get get the cards can get the video get up there I don't crop my postcards either they get scanned in and I use that picture the scan snap is what I use for these cards and for the bigger cards those um, prints and the photos I have an Epson scanner and the reason why is I can't get the border feature that Epson has on these white very white cards and these they they blend too much into the background and I'll be doing a video on the comparison between the two and why I have two scanners but it's enabled me to list these cards fast but I, I'll scan these up but uh, I don't crop my cards or change the colors or whatever. It, it, I just take the picture and go. 
And if there's questions about them, people are so postcards or people are buying them from a flat picture on eBay. So they, they might have questions, but most of the people know they're used. There's writing on them. Uh, they're going to have wear, so stuff like that. But eBay, the listing tools. If you got any questions, put them in the comments. I'm sure somebody out there, out of the 700 subscribers we got now, have used these tools and can help help you with that or uh, give us the pros and cons. Listing tools. Check out the polls. I, I just put up another one over there. The other day was. What's the worst mistake you ever made selling postcards? <laughs> so, and uh, I got one coming up is, what's the worst negative comment you ever got from a buyer? So just to spread and let everybody know that everybody has the same problems. Uh, most of the problems you get are probably not too unique to other sellers. Uh, they're pretty well the same. Once in a while you get a pretty uh, neat problem. But now let me get into the viewer comments, and these come from emails, uh, videos, comments in the videos. In our descriptions in the video, there's a lot of information in there that I, I'm putting in there, all the tools that I've talked about, email address, there's um, uh, postcard shows, uh, clubs and stuff, uh, uh, links to the website there. So go and check the description. And always check that on the YouTube videos, there's always good stuff in there. But the first comment that came in came from Tim. And Tim says, this is pr uh, probably from one of the videos, I'm not for sure which one it was, or uh, he said, I think I'll always use my phone for pics. Oh, this came from the poll that said, what, what do you use, your camera, your phone to take photos, I think. I think I will always use my phone for pic pictures. Don't you have, then he's asking, don't you have to reorient it, some of the scanned photos? Once you spend time rotating any photos that are upside down, you've given back all the time that the scanner originally saved. Not really. It, the most that you have to turn a picture on the eBay tool is three clicks and a save. If you put the postcards in correctly into the scanner, which I don't, I just grab a stack of about 20 and I stick them in there and I just keep sticking them in there. If the picture is flipped, I check that when I do the, the listing and it takes a couple seconds just to the most you got to click is turn it three times and it'll go uh, on there so the time saved before or you save it afterwards you know but doing a scanner I do have a scanner versus camera video in the what sold section on the channel that actually breaks down how many cards you can do with a scanner and I did it for 10 minutes with a camera and 10 minutes with a scanner and I broke down the quality and the speed and how many cards were done and what the cost would be so uh, I, the scanner I would I would have to recommend the scanner over a camera over a phone on that um, but if you like the phone keep doing it if it's working for you keep doing it there's no reason to, to change just because I said so or anybody else. Uh, you know, I'm not tied to technology or a certain way, but I found the scanner and, and uh, have done that. The next one comes from the gentleman that had the other on what listing tool you use. And this is right up my alley in the IT world. Mansa679 said, I choose other in that poll we just talked about. I wrote my own listing screen. So he wrote his own eBay. <laughs> he wrote his own listing screen. He's a retired IT guy like me. Now he's probably a developer. I was more of a manager and hardware technical and communications. Uh, even though I did the programming and stuff, but I, I more focused on uh, transmission and technical and security. So he's a retired IT guy, and this is my new gig. So it's right in my alley. That's <laughs> exactly what I'm doing. I find great pleasure in coding for my own, ch for his own, for a change. I coded applications for other people's for almost 20 years, and it is nice to finally develop something that benefits me and I can make. Improvements, refinements to what I, whenever I want. It's especially nice to move code from development to production instantly. Those who have been in the IT field, you know what I'm talking about. So there's a thing called the development life cycle for applications. And there's also, uh, so when you develop something, 
you got your testing, you got your stage, you got your regression testing to make sure you didn't break anything else, and then you got to stage it for uh, production, then you got to put it in to say when you're going to do it, uh, and then cut over. You just can't, especially in any financial stuff, uh, Sarbanes-Oxley laws, you, you have to track everything that you're doing. If you make changes, you have to uh, have all that documentation that you're making changes. Um, plus, I was in—I did a lot of change control, so we—you just can't push stuff to production. Most of the time, when something breaks, it's because it either wore out or someone made a change. Most of the ninety percent of the time, someone made a change. They restarted the system, they uploaded, they changed something, they deleted one thing, didn't think it would hurt anything, and it just has a snowball effect. I've seen where it's taken out hundreds of servers and it took us like all weekend to get these servers back up because someone blew away the con one configuration file um, or some Windows upgrade <coughs> back in the day did something to the application. Nowadays it doesn't affect too much applications, but I know what he's talking about. So he built his own tool. So he, that's one person that did the other. So I, you know, uh, the next question I got, so I think I sold a card of some older card with some ladies with hats on it. Now I'm not a clothing guy and I'm not a period guy looking at clothing. If someone's got a hat on it. So she, this person said the 1904 ASO card is all about the hats for the era. So she was talking about somebody that had some hats, you know, in the picture and they were vintage hats. And so she, that's what she looked at. So, like I said before, I look at this postcard, I see something different than you look and see, or him over there looks and see. She saw the hats. I just saw a dingy looking postcard with three ladies on it. So it didn't catch my eye, but it caught hers. She said, people love to see women in beautiful hats from that era, like me. So that could trigger her, if she was a buyer, to buy that card. So did I price it too low? Or how many of hers are out there that like hats? That's the beauty of postcards. This is what sells the postcard, the picture. So if you got good pictures, clear, and you got good descriptions, you got good photos, you got good titles, and you got a good price to sell, you're going to sell postcards because people are going to see the hats and like those. That, that's the basics. You got to get those basics down is what I recommend. But she likes hats. That card would have sold. Maybe more. Oh well. But thank you all for the comments. Keep commenting. I, uh, I like them. It helps everybody and stuff like that. And we sell a lot of cards here. Now I'm not the biggest seller, not the best seller, uh, but always check our store and other the big seller stores out to see what they're selling and what's going. Instead of just looking at what's sold, I do look at uh, Refried Jeans, Popeyes postcards, uh, Jackass Retro, Epic Treasures. Um, all these different sites uh, have stores. I think uh, I know most of them do, and there's videos out there also but they're also their ebay stores they don't hide their stores so you can see they're sold so you can go out and see what they're doing and how they're generating it but one of the things i do for pushing cards i get a question all the time is i do volume discounts in ebay so i set up my whole inventory everything that's in the postcard store is under that rule for volume discounts in the mark or marketing part of it so if you do 10%, 15%, but I break all that down in this video here, and it will help you sell more cards to one person because they get a break. But check this video out here. That's all I got for you today. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one.